Okay, so there we have it. All 26 episodes of the first season of The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I'm going to try not to think about the second season, which has 39 episodes, and focus on this. One of the notable differences that I couldn't help but point out is Max and Tapeworm were a huge part of it. Allison Stoner was so good as Max, but I don't think she's in it as much after this season. You know, we really get a feel for the, the entire show. And there's about three or four key components I wanted to kind of go over. One is the hotel setting. Tipton Hotel, main location, provides a dynamic backdrop that allows for a lot of these storylines to take place. Right. Yes, Miss Martin's marvelous. <laughs> Everything in the Tipton is marvelous. <laughs> its luxury atmosphere contrasts hilariously with Zack and Cody's like mischievous antics. And I think we learn that like immediately off the bat. The Tipton becomes a character in itself with its eccentric guests, lavish settings, and even employees giving rise to many of the comedic situations. The setting allows for creative plot lines that mix typical childhood experiences with the chaos of hotel life, making the series both whimsical and fresh. Whoa, what's that on your face? <laughs> it's a beauty mark. Then we got the characters. Zack and Cody are the twin leads, Dylan and Cole Sprouse, and they exhibit the classic sibling dynamic. Where's Muriel? Oh, she's fine. We fed her, let her watch TV, and she went to sleep right on time. <laughs> Zack as the daring troublemaker, and Cody as the more cautious and brainy counterpart. It's a lot, the difference between Drake and Josh and Zack and Cody's dynamic is kind of with the situations that surround them. I feel like Drake and Josh are more deeper characters in the sense that they have interests. They're like figured out who they are through like small lines or instances, even like comedic beats. But Zack and Cody seem to be revealed as characters through the situations they're put in. What are you talking about? Oh my, those are lovely. He eh, should have sent you chocolates. Why? Cause you're out. And with the hotel being such a drastic experience and like a normal childhood life, we get to see Zach and Cody making these decisions and kind of reveal who they are as people. Unlike Drake and Josh, which is a typical di dynamic of family in this one house. So it's a little bit more grounded. But the thing I like about Zach and Cody is it's truly an ensemble show as opposed to a duo show. Despite Drake and Josh and Sweet Life having that duo aesthetic, it seems like Drake and Josh is more of a duo comedy, buddy comedy show, and Zach and Cody is more of an ensemble show. As we see that Maddie, London, and Mr. Mosby are very central to the show's plots, and also bring a lot out in each other, as opposed to like the dad, mom, and Megan in Drake and Josh. Meeting Arwen, Esteban, even Muriel, we get like introduced to a lot of really fun characters that show us a lot about the world that they're trying to set up in this Disney show. And it is just, it's so unique and vibrant that you just want to see all the different parts of the hotel throughout the show. Mr. Mosby is uh, Phil Lewis, so he is the tightly wound manager as a standout. Kind of reminds me of the rabbit from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Actually, the show little reminds me of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. If Blue and Mac were Zack and Cody, um, his attempts to maintain order in the hotel while constantly dealing with the twins' hijinks give the series like some of its funniest moments. In fact, I've had all of my ties pressed, and I got a new suit, and my shoelace is missing a tip. It's missing a tip! Not only that is like he is the perfect straight man character, especially for London's hijinks, Maddie's neuroticism, and then Zack and Cody's obvious just craziness. Exasperation and quick wit are balanced by his genuine care for the hotel staff and guests. Although we do find him being an antagonist in a lot of situations, but that's a lot, that has to do, that makes it a lot more interesting anyway. And then we get Maddie and London, the dynamic between Maddie and London. I dreamt daddy lost all of his money and I wound up living with him. <laughs> Good morning to you too. The dynamic between a smart, hardworking candy counter girl and London, a spoiled heiress, a lot of money adds a really cool layer to the show. Especially them being like about an age group above what they are. It, it kind of allows us to see Zach and Cody as like the Gen Z and, and then a 
than the millennials. It's it's cool that we get to see uh, different ages going through different things within this hotel. It's like kind of like a Cheers situation where we get a little bit of insight on all the characters' daily whereabouts. And aren't you a little old to be a dancer? Um, that's not a contestant. That's the producer. <laughs> Kidding! <laughs> Love the dress. <laughs> through this one central location. But they're really good at also somehow balancing what the characters develop are developing as we go through, especially in these first 13 episodes. Some of the themes and lessons of this earlier aspect have to do with uh, Zack and Cody's attempts to fit in and gain popularity, especially with their relationship to school. Cody's misguided decision to enter a beauty pageant in the fairest of them all addresses his secret seeking of approval from others. And then episodes like Grounded on the 23rd Floor explore the consequences of breaking the rules. And then The Prince and the Plunger and Footlooser focus on themes of honesty and teamwork. So it, it seems like the lessons are subtle enough where they don't feel forced and they also play second fiddle to all the comedy and entertainment that goes on in them, which I think is what makes it such a good show. I'm sorry, could you please take the next elevator? <laughs> the pacing and plot variety is well handled, and each episode is really good at having a self-contained story while also continuing to develop the characters. Having Maddie and Zach as the A plot for one and, and Cody as like the C plot for another one. There's a lot of turn taking on uh, which role these characters play and it's keeping the show fresh every time. Especially with the Mad Mad Hotel episode with, with everybody wanting their own desires out of the situation. Hot Pepper Stilio for funding my research and my personal assistant, Dr. Inga. It, it's the perfect beginning to a show. I think if it ended after these 13 episodes, it would have well established what the show was going for. You know, this, the series is really good at avoiding feeling repetitive, especially later on, given the context of these episodes, because so many of them revolve around Zack and Cody. You know, either Zack doing the wrong thing or Cody doing the right thing, but it ends up wrong. Like. These happen over and over again, yet somehow every episode does feel unique. And it's even more interesting in the very beginning how each of them adds so many new elements like hotel inspectors, beauty pageants, or even battle of the bands. While the series primar primarily focus on humor, there is a noticeable amount of character development even in the early episodes. Like Zack and Cody start learning about consequences and personal responsibility in Grounded on the 23rd Floor and To Catch a Thief, where their actions actually directly affect the others around them, the people living around them in this hotel. And then Maddie and London, initially seen as, you know, simple foils to each other, actually develop a friendship despite their indifferences and they actually deepen care for each other as the show progresses. And even early on, it's really cool to see how they start out because they are so different right off the bat. And seeing it, seeing them get closer is a very well-deserved treat if you stick it to the episodes. Time for bed. It's 7.30 and we haven't even had dinner yet. We want grilled cheese, please. I can handle that. I do that in the kitchen, right? I definitely think that there's area of improvement that we'll see over the show, but like, let's view the first half of the season in this largely successful franchise as its own. So the, I definitely think the supporting characters like Esteban and Arwen, though hilarious, don't give us much development in the first half, especially since we don't necessarily need to develop this as an ensemble show right off the bat. Like Zach and Cody already have enough layers to them that there is so much we can cover. Although I am happy to see more of it. And even in future episodes, I think giving these side characters more personal storylines is going to overall make the show a lot more longer of a run. And same with the episode structure. Like all the, the although the episodes are very engaging, they do follow some predictable patterns. Like Zack and Cody having schemes that lead to chaos followed by a resolution. The formula works really well and we're very distracted from it based on all the comedic relief and the character goals. But I do think that the structure could benefit from slightly uh, more fresh storytelling dynamics. Like for example, like exiting the hotel and having what the hotel teaches Zack and Cody affecting them in the real world 
and not necessarily going on a boat for another series, wink, wink. Um, but yeah, overall, the first half of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody is a solid and entertaining introduction to the series. You could tell why this became a staple for the early Disney Channel 2000s era, and it offers a, such a good mix of heart, humor, and mischief, with memorable characters and a unique setting that actually allows for so many varieties of comedic situations. Zack and Cody's antics with the struggles and a, of going against the eccentric hotel staff and even Mr. Mosby provides so many laughs, while also teaching viewers important, important lessons about friendship, responsibility, being true to oneself, and different adult relationship dynamics. The show establishes a strong foundation, making it clear that is truly going to be going on beyond this season and for many years to come. I had a lot of fun re-watching this, and though it's not as up there as Hannah Montana, which my video is on my YouTube right now, I do think it was such a good watch and definitely a pivotal moment for Disney Channel. But what do you guys think about Zack and Cody? Is it your favorites, anybody? I mean, if you sat through a 50-minute video, I don't see why it wouldn't be. But unlike you, I'm not enjoying your pain. In the meantime, like and subscribe to Johnny2000 for more 2000s media content, reviews, and physical media. Have a great day.